The Indonesian crime thriller Borderless Fog, directed by Edwin and starring Putri Marino, takes place on the border between Indonesia and Malaysia, on the island of Borneo. A police investigation is launched in the area when a decapitated body is discovered. The case is taken over by Indonesian police, who discover that the body and head belong to two different individuals. The head belongs to Staff Sergeant Thorak Kurdian and the body belongs to a Dayak fighter, Juing, who disappeared six weeks before being discovered. Inspector Sanja arrives at the local police station from Jakarta to conduct a thorough investigation. The head of the local police department, Officer Panka, is not happy about his involvement. The border area holds many secrets and he fears Sanja will try to dig too deep. Sanja quickly understands that the murder was not committed at random, there is a greater purpose behind them. Sanja turned to stone when she saw Thomas's headless body. After controlling her emotions, she realized that there was someone else with her at the factory. She noticed the guard Bujang walking around. He explained that he had found little Aram in the woods. He offered her some sedative tea to help her rest. He held Thomas's head in one hand and Sanja assumed that he was the one who had killed him. Bujang continued to maintain his innocence, he explained that Panka had shot Thomas and beheaded him with a combat knife. Sanja corrects him by saying that the killer beheaded his victim with two quick blows, and Bojang says that Panka could be a copycat killer. Sanja states with certainty that the real killer was Bojang, and he simply nods. In the epilogue of Borderless Fog, Bojang confesses to the murder and believes that he did what was necessary for the Dayak community. After years of oppression, the community continues to suffer. Human trafficking exists to exploit the oppressed. Unable to provide for their families, the parents sold their children out of desperation. Bujang decided to end the trade after the Dayak men, Asraf and Juing, were murdered. This indicated that Juing had been killed by the traffickers. Panka ordered Sanja to shoot Bujang, but she could barely move. She pointed the gun at Bujang, but she looked at him with admiration. It seemed that Bujang's body was possessed by the spirit and in one swift move he beheaded Panka. By the time Sanja pulled the trigger it was too late. Sanja followed Bujang into the forest. She couldn't see clearly but she could hear. He didn't want to behead Sanja because she never had any bad intentions towards her community. She was given the opportunity to control the story, and in the end, she decided to let Bujang go. At the end of Mist Without Borders, Aram was safely returned to the factory. On the other hand, Agam committed suicide after being accused of multiple murders, and Panka was declared a hero for his dedication to his work, but his body was never found. Sanja did not talk about Panka's involvement in human trafficking because it could ruin Thomas's reputation, and she wanted him to be remembered as an honest and dedicated policeman. She also chose to protect Bujang because the truth could cause more trouble for the Dayak community. In the final scene of Borderless Fog, a young boy is seen wiping his bloody boots in a river on the island of Borneo in 1972. As mentioned in the film, during the conflict from 1967 to 1990, the armies of neighboring Malaysia and Indonesia worked together with local people to defeat the communist Paraku forces in the area. The boy is probably Bujang, who had previously revealed to Sanja that he had helped the army during the communist insurgency. Bujang grew up during a time of unrest. He had seen violence firsthand. He may have cleaned some of the bloody military boots for reuse by his community. Perhaps as a boy, he assumed that the government would one day look after the well-being of his community, especially after the people there helped root out the communists. But as an adult, he understood that they would always be oppressed, and that was when he took action. Whether Ambong's ghost spoke to him remains a mystery, but Bujang probably preferred to imagine that the forest spirit was protecting him. But the presence of ghosts in folklore is unconfirmed. Hope you like this video. Stay tuned in this channel for latest upcoming updates on this series. And add a bookmark in this channel for further upcoming updates on movies anime and web series. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video please like comment and share our channel. And for latest updates please subscribe our channel and press the bell icon.